Hi everybody, thank you for being here. My name is Harm van der Brink and I work as an IT architect at Inexus and Elat. And then I would like to point out the importance of uh, cybersecurity. But first, let me tell you this. It's December 2015. It's winter in Ukraine. It's already dark and cold outside. And as an operator of a control center, of a uh, grid operator, is ending his working day, he's cleaning up his desk, grabbing some papers, looking at his screen, until he suddenly sees his cursor is moving. It's moving by itself. The cursor goes to a substation, clicks on it, and a dialogue fencer opens. Are you sure you want to open this breaker? The cursor goes to yes. And the operator thinks, OK, this is wrong, and tries to desperately gain control. So he grabs the mouse, but it's unresponsive. And the cursor clicks on yes. A breaker opens. And the operator knows that because of opening the breakers, thousands of residents are left in the dark and the cold. He tries to gain control again, but the cursor goes to another substation. And then suddenly, he's locked out. He can't gain control anymore, and his computer is unresponsive. But because of the large screens in front of them, he can see that substation after substation after substation goes offline. And of course, also, the control center is behind one of these substations. But they have backup power, so they have nothing to be afraid of. If not, the hackers also change the firmware of the backup power. And if the substation of the control center goes down, also the control center goes down. So they are totally left in the dark, literally, and they have no idea what is happening, what just happened, how many residents are in the dark, and also, the telephone number you can call if your power is down is unreachable because the hackers did not DDoS it, but TDoS it. A fake phone calls, a lot of them, to this phone number, so they couldn't reach that anymore. So they didn't know which residents were left in the dark, what was happening, how many people were affected. They had literally no idea what happened. 230,000 people were left in the dark. And it was really cold, so also heating did not work. And why I'm telling you this? Well, a and l is all about smart charging, about smart charging your car. Smart charging is controlling the energy flow towards a car when we tell it to charge or to charge a bit faster or slower. We also want to use as much sustainable energy as possible, because we want to use solar, or wind energy, and for example, we have an evening peak and a morning peak when we use a lot of energy when we uh, wake up or when we get home. But during the middle of the day, there's a lot of solar energy, which we don't use currently. And at Elat we are trying to make use of that abundance of energy of solar and wind during the day. This means we would need to steer when the car charges. That's smart charging. We also have, in the evening, for example, a peak demand. When everybody gets home from their work and they plug in their car, it starts charging. But you can imagine if you have a lot of cars in the street and one car represents the same amount of energy of peak demand as 16 households, you can imagine that we have to steer that to be able to, to control it and to keep the grid up and running. But with introducing smart charging and with introducing IT, we also introduce responsibility. Because if you can control the energy flow to a car, you also have the responsibility to do that right and to do that secure. Because we are connecting two vital infrastructures. We have the mobility infrastructure and the energy infrastructure. And in the future, in the near future, they rely on each other. Because if we want to use as much solar energy and wind energy as possible, we need to be able to put that in the car and maybe with vehicle to grid, get it back from the car. So we need to control them and steer them. But it also means that we have the responsibility to make that secure. Because we are interconnecting everything. Solar, wind, the cars, even batteries in your household, for example. It's already happening that third parties can control the battery in your household when it's charging, when it's discharging. So we're interconnecting everything, which is good. 
what we need to do is secure. Because if you think of that, 100,000 charge points, which already exist in the Netherlands, can use the same amount of energy as four gas-fired power plants can produce. You can think of how much energy you can control if you control these charge points. So we need to act now. And what do we need to do? We need to secure the communication towards the charge points, towards the back offices, towards the car. All communication needs to be secured, so no hacker can intervene and nobody can eavesdrop. We need to secure our charge points, because they are out in the open. They are in the field, you can reach them whenever you want, even during the night, you can open them if you want to. So we need to secure them, and we need to make sure that if one charge point gets compromised, not all the others goes down too. We need to support the security requirements ELADNL and ENCS created together to make sure that these requirements are used in tenders and in next place charge stations all around the world. We also need to research the vulnerabilities. We need to know what is happening, what can go wrong, where the vulnerabilities are. We need to find them ourselves before others do, and we need to fix it so we know what can happen. For example, with the WannaCry ransomware, we know that the NSA already knew that it existed, the exploit, but they didn't fix it until they got hacked themselves and somebody else used the same exploit to gain control over a lot of computers. So we need to find the vulnerabilities ourselves because it's our, our responsibility to do that. And we need to create awareness. We need to be aware of the fact that we are combining the two critical infrastructures together and that they rely on each other. And we need to do that now. Because introducing IT is okay, it's not a problem. It's not a problem if you do cybersecurity by design and you do it right. Then IT is okay because we need it. Because if we want to use as much solar and wind energy as possible, we need IT systems to control that energy flow. We need it to charge our cars when we want to or discharge. But work together. We need to work together, not only in the Netherlands, but in Europe or maybe across the world. And we need to have cybersecurity by design. That's a very important thing. Cybersecurity by design limits the impact of any hack, of any risk, and we can mitigate them. So let's start today. Thank you. <laughs>